Good morning, eighth grade. Welcome to another exciting day of science from the quarantine Brennemucker somewhere in the southeast United States. As we continue to rock out a little Molly through, we hope everybody's having a great day. And here we go with some actual schoolwork. So we're going to jump right in here. Right here, we're talking, I've already prepared this for you guys, so we're just going to be kind of going through it. 81 one, we're still talking about the hydrosphere, which is the water or somewhere around the planet. I can explain why the ocean is an integral component of the world's climate. So, climate, that's the weather over a long period of time, not a short period of time, a long period of time. When I say long period, I'm talking like 50 years long. Okay. So the ocean can hold and circulate more water, heat, and CO2, carbon dioxide, than the atmosphere. That comes straight up our standard from the state. This is the important piece that we all need to know. I uh, will color it red just to make sure you guys are aware of it. So the ocean can hold and circulate more heat and CO2 than the atmosphere. The ocean contains 71% of all the water on the Earth. The atmosphere contains 0.04% of the water on the Earth. Huge difference. The atmosphere contains 3,210 gigatons of carbon dioxide. The atmosphere contains 14,200 gigatons of water. The ocean contains 160,500 gigatons of CO2. Let's see, 3,210 3, versus 160,500. That is a huge difference. The ocean contains a lot of carbon dioxide. Water in the oceans on the Earth is about 150 million gigatons. There's 14,200 gigatons in the atmosphere. Again, ocean has more. So with others like these, it should be obvious that the oceans have far more, far higher capacity to contain molecules such as carbon dioxide. And obviously, water. Um, now, the last piece on that was heat. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the lesson. So the ocean, if we go down here, and it, oh, oh, and this, this word gigatons is, you know, you've heard of, of a ton, then you have, you know, a thousand tons, then you have a million tons, which they, they term megatons. So then you have gigatons, which is above that, which, so it's thousands, millions, basically it's billions, but they call it giga because it's tons and not something else. I mean, that's just the term they use. But hey, guess what? We don't get to make stuff up. We just get to learn it. Oh, the ocean's divided into zones based on sunlight penetration. The photic zone or epipelagic, epi, epi, epipelagic, say that one more time. Epipelagic zone is from zero to 200 meters. Photic zone, photic, photons, lights, that's how it travels. So the photic zone or epipelagic zone is from zero to 200 meters. This is where there's enough light that humans can see things in the water. Um, it's kind of funny, it, it, you know, it, I just watched this thing the other day where this guy goes and he, and he sets the world record for free diving. So, um, if my computer will respond, come on, free diving world record. Let's see if we come up with a video because I watched this the other day and I just popped it in my head. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, let's see, J 14, 18, all right, so Herbert Nitsch, Frosted Single Breath, Alex, about 130 meters, 18, 19. So when, when you watch these guys do this, let's just, that's uh, a six minute video. Let's just jump back here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Herbert Nitsch dives deep as far as, this is a minute 53, so we're gonna like kind of scroll through this. I want you guys to watch this. So. This guy's a free diver. He, um, looking for a video. Um, it's not quite what I'm looking for. It's his own website, not actually a YouTube video. So let's just do this one. So we're gonna watch this, we'll watch it and fast forward. Sorry, this uh, went this way, but you know, guess what? Sometimes things just don't quite go the way you want them to go, even if you plan for it. So we're gonna watch this guy. So it's all right. So what's happening here is we call we talk about free diving. We're literally talking about diving 
underwater with no, you, know, you don't have tanks, you don't have anything, you just take a bunch of breaths there at the surface, and then you go down. No fins, no nothing. He just goes over and goes down. So I want you to watch here at the top. Well, this guy's got a fin, so this one happens to use fins. So up here at the top part of it, you can see we're going down, we're going down, we're going down. You can see. You can see, you can see, you can see, no problem at all. As he goes down, I mean, he hits a certain point, he's not really kicking that hard, but he's got a rope right here with like on a on a thing that's attached to this this cable that goes down. And so once he gets down below a certain point, the water um he just keeps sinking. He doesn't have he is negatively buoyant. He doesn't have to try very hard to continue to go down. And again, since you're literally doing this on one breath, um, you know, you, you, one thing I want you guys to look at, look at the difference in the water. He's got a headlight on and it's just getting darker and darker and darker. It's 70 meters. So that's you know roughly 150 feet. Now I did 80 meters, 240 feet. When the camera kind of tilts back up here, you'll see it kind of looks bright, kind of up towards the surface. And frankly, I have no idea what in the world this camera's on. Is this camera on another cable and it's just like tracking him automatically? Is this another person on this thing with like scuba tanks? But I mean, it's just trying. But now we're at 104 meters, and it is really dark. And yet, all right, so you can see right there, it says 112 meters down, right? Back up here, see how light? Dark, 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 dark. It's gotten pretty dark, and we're still going, we're still going, we're still going down. Oh yeah, we're two minutes in, and this dude's still holding his breath. So in order to be able to say, oh yeah, I made it, you have to grab that little tag off that thing and come back up. So now he's gotta, he's gotta kick up because he's way deep in the water, 130 meters is the bottom of that thing. But again, so now as we come up, gets lighter, gets lighter, gets lighter, and I'll kill it there. Like finally, you know, up in here, it starts looking light, 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 light. Now we hit the surface. So, so that's the photic zone. I mean, that guy went down to 140 meters, which is not, not, not quite 200 meters, but you can still see. At, at 140 meters, it was really dark. There was not a whole lot of light left. So the, 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 you know, the ability for things to see using, you know, human live, level of vision is, is really, you know, the last 50 meters of this is, is very um very low and so that's so the, so the next that's the zone where it's, it supposedly has enough light that he can see things in the water um without that flash without that headlight he would have had a really hard time finding that little tab on the side of that platform down there at 140 meters so um the next zone is the meso mesopelagic zone or twilight zone this zone's from 200 meters to a thousand thousand meters from 200 meters which is basically the bottom of where humans can see, down to a thousand meters, which is three thousand three hundred and sixty feet. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, that's pretty dang deep. Um, human eyes are not built to see at this level, but some light from the sun is still making it down that far. And the creatures that live at these depths can see, so they've got eyes that you know we probably wouldn't recognize as much as eyes. I mean, they probably don't look very much like ours, but. Um, they still can sense some of that light. So, and but again, I mean, you got to be thinking about it. How much light are they sensing at a thousand meters? I mean, it's just it's just barely, you know, dark and darker. Hey, look, it's less dark over there. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but it's it, they're not you know, they're truly not seeing things. Um, and then below a thousand meters here is the the, the bathopelagic zone down to four thousand meters. Below that, it's from four thousand to six thousand meters is the abyssopelagic zone. Most of the ocean, this carries you to the bottom. 
6,000 meters, that's about as deep as the typical, any of the typical deep parts of the ocean. Um, the only places that are deeper than that are the trenches, where uh, from 6,000 meters down to the bottom and about 11,000 meters is called the Hadal Pelagic Zone. And the focus of our activity for most of this unit is going to be up in the epipelagic zone down to 200 meters. I mean, really, you know, as far as, as what we're talking about, that, that, you know, once you get below 200 meters, doesn't do a whole lot for us as far as um, heat storage um, and climate. Um, so the zones where most of the stored heat in the ocean resides, once you go below 200 meters, the temperature starts to drop and the lower the temp, the less stored energy. So, um, so now, why can water store heat energy? Remember yesterday we said that water has a very high specific heat. Remember, specific heat is the amount of energy it takes to heat up one gram of water, one degree Celsius, right? So um, it's a physical characteristic of a substance. It's the amount of energy in the form of heat is required to raise one gram of substance, one degree Celsius. Water has one of the highest specific heats of any material, 4.186 joules per gram. In a gallon of water, there are 3,785 grams of water, one acre foot, one acre foot, that's basically one foot of water over an acre of an area is 325,851 gallons. To raise the temperature of an acre foot of water, one degree Celsius, you'd have to input 516,300,000 joules of energy. That's a lot of energy. That's only one acre, 4,840 square yards or 60% of a pro soccer field. I mean, that's, you know, run around an acre all day long and I really get tired. Um, and that's only a foot deep. So we're talking about, um, you know, energy storage down to 200 meters, which is, you know, a meter is 3.3 feet. So um, the ocean is measured in millions of acres and it's certainly different than a foot. So, the, so you, can, you can just imagine how much energy um, water in the ocean can store. And that's kind of where this day ends right now is the fact that that, I mean, just, one acre foot of water, one degree Celsius, 516 million joules of energy. Um, <coughs> that's a lot. So, what happens if we just plug this into our friend uh, Google here and search it? So we can't get an equivalent to uh, that level of joules. Nope. All right, let's see. Um, let's see. Stick dynamite. Stick of dynamite is approximately one megajoule, which is one million joules. And we're talking 560, we're talking 516 million sticks of dynamite in one acre foot of water. 516 sticks of dynamite. Um, That's a lot of energy, 516 sticks of dynamite. Uh, let's, let's go down here to TNT equivalent in the Wikipedia. Hmm. Let me know. So we have 516 million joules or 516 megajoules. Um, so a ton of TNT is the inner energy defined by the convention to be 4.184 gigajoules. So you wouldn't have quite a ton of, of TNT. Um, So each gram of TNT is 4,184 joules. That's kind of funny that 4.184 is water. So gram of TNT has a lot more energy than a gram of water, right? Well, heat wise anyway. Um, so uh, just real quickly, calculations. So how much how many grams of TNT would this equal? Um, so if I jump over to the old calculator, 500, 516, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, divided by 
123,326.27 grams, which is, so divide that by a thousand, 123 kilograms of TNT. Um, just over a tenth of a metric ton. 123 kilograms. Um, most people weigh about 50 kilograms. So basically way more than your body weight in um, TNT, which is a high explosive, more powerful than dynamite. Anyway, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what we end up figuring out is that water holds an amazing amount of energy in the form of heat. And there is a crazy amount of water on the surface of this planet. And so thereby, water holds in the ocean, has the capacity of storing all this heat. And one of the things, because it has takes so much to get it move up at the you know the temperature as the temperature as the seasons change and the temperature goes down in the air which happens very quickly the ocean then radiates this heat back into the you know the, the surrounding area and obviously it has a lot of heat to radiate and so you know this is this is the reason that areas um that are close to oceans have a lot less variance in their um, in their seasonal temperatures and stuff. This is the reason that um, uh, let's see the uh, up there in you know England and Northern Europe is actually habitable because you know the ocean currents carry a lot of heat that would normally you know from the tropics up there, and it makes those areas of the planet habitable versus Arctic tundra. So anyway. Today's takeaway, number one, um, ocean can hold, circulate more water, heat, and CO2 than the atmosphere. The zones of the ocean, the epipelagic zone, the mesopelagic zone, the bathopelagic zone, and the abyssopelagic zone, and then the hadalpelagic zone. I'm sure you can actually go buy a submarine and go down to the, to the bottom of the trenches, if you, know, if you had that kind of money. You just go buy it, no problem, right? It's only 45 million. Yeah, pocket change, right? But you can go buy a submarine and go down to the bottom of the ocean if you want. And, you know, can write that check. But anyway, just things to know. Or, you know, goals to shoot for when you get older. So, have a great day. Hope everybody stays safe. Keep that distance between you and everybody else because there's some crazy videos going out there showing how far sneezes really do go. Wear a mask when you go outside. Have a great day.